hello and welcome back to my channel today i wanted to show you guys how i am knitting color work when i was learning how to do this there were a lot of videos out there teaching you how to do intarsia color work which is what i have to do for this lovely sweater but there weren't a lot of easy ways to do it to me it just seemed a lot more complicated than it needed to be so i kind of figured out my own i call it cheating way <laughs> to do it, but it works. It's kind of a combination of things that I learned from all of those other videos out there, and those are very comprehensive, wonderful videos, but I just wanted to kind of put my own out there for what I've been doing that seems to work just fine. So, let's get into this. Since this is a paid pattern, I am not going to be showing you the entire pattern or the chart. I just want to show you a little bit to see um, what we're doing today. I was planning on doing two rows so you can see how I knit and purl this intarsia color work. So when you're looking at a color work chart for knitting, each square is going to be one stitch. So as you can see for these birds, I have my background color, this is my sweater color that I'm using for the overall color of the sweater, and then I have a green color and then a very pale green color. It almost looks white. So what I do to keep these all organized is I have one ball of red going at all times, just one. In traditional intarsia, what you're supposed to do, and I use that in quotes because there's never just one way to do things. You can always find your own way. You're supposed to have a bobbin of color or a little ball of color for each color that you see across the row. So for example, right here, I would have a red ball and then that light green ball. And then I would have one green ball right here, another, a second light green ball right here, and then a second green one right here, and then a second red ball for all of this. So if you're counting, that would be six little balls or bobbins of yarn. There are points in this chart where I have multiple birds going across here. So I would have dozens of little bobbins of yarn and I was not about to do that. That is way too much. I refused. So I figured I can figure this out. I can make it work with just one background color and then one of each color for the birds. And that has been way more manageable for me. Um, it is. It doesn't get quite as crazy or, like I said, intimidating to work on. Um, not that it doesn't get a little bit crazy, but it's much more manageable than having, you know, 16 balls of yarn at one point to do this color work. I just think it makes more sense for me. I do have to untwist the yarn every few rows. I do it every two rows just to keep it manageable. There are a few secrets to making this work, so let me dive in and show you. Here we are a little bit closer. So I'm just going to knit the amount of stitches that I need for this red color, which right now I need 17. So as I'm getting closer, I'm going to stop one stitch before I need the next color. So I need 17 red stitches. I'm going to stop at 16. Let me count. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to pause. For intarsia to work without having any gaps or holes in your fabric, you have to twist your yarn before and after your stitches. Um, let me just explain what that means. So right now I stopped one red stitch before the amount that I need. So I need 17. I stopped at 16. I'm going to drop my yarn to the left and then I'm going to reach behind it and grab the new color that I'm going to need. I'm not going to use that color yet because I need one more red stitch. So I'm going to twist them so that I can pick up that red and catch the light green on that stitch. 
is leave it hanging right there so that when I stitch with this red, I am going to catch it behind my stitch. So we're going to do that last red stitch. And as you can see right here, it catches it. So it keeps it from leaving a gap right here. And I will show you that in just a second. So now, always dropping your yarn to the left and then picking up that new color from underneath it and bringing it up. This time we are going to use that light green. So now I need five of these light green stitches. So I'm going to do one, two, three. Right now I'm going to pause and I'm going to grab my red hanging yarn that I just left there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to catch my float. So I'm going to twist again, dropping your yarn, your working yarn to the left. I am reaching underneath and grabbing that red so that I can create a float. And then I'm going to twist it, grabbing that light green again. That red will be caught behind these stitches. And I'll show you in a minute why I'm doing this. But I'm going to knit five of these light green stitches. So I'm going to do four because we need to stop one before the full amount that we need. So now I'm going to do one more. Now we have four light green stitches and I am catching that red behind so that we have a float and it's not going to be loosely floating across my entire design. So now I have four of these light green stitches. I need five, but the next color that I need is going to be this green color. So now I am going to drop my yarn to the left and then I'm going to reach underneath it and grab that green color that I'm going to need. And I'm going to, just like before, twist it so that I can grab the light green again and we can do that one last light green stitch. And the whole time that I am doing this, I'm keeping a loose tension looser than you would probably normally do keeping one color just because you need to be sure to spread your stitches so that there isn't too tight of tension and it's going to be all bunched up like this we always want to be stretching our stitches like this so now i need my green stitch and we're only doing one green stitch and since we've caught the green yarn the stitch before it's not going to leave a gap right here in between our stitches. So I'm going to grab, again, laying my working yarn to the left, going behind and underneath it. I am grabbing that green yarn and I'm going to bring it up over to use. And if you just give that a tug, it'll even out your stitch if it's looking a little bit loose because that yarn was just hanging free. So now I am going to knit one green stitch. And now that I have that green stitch, I'm going to leave my yarn to the left and grab that light green yarn. That's the one that I need next. And I am going to, to knit with that color now. So as you can see, it's been a few stitches since we have caught our red float. Um, and I'm just going to continue carrying that float. Um, every three, four, five stitches, I'm not super strict on it, but I do like to catch it so it's not a super long float across the back of the hummingbird. And again, just spreading my stitches to create a looser tension, a more even tension. I'm going to reach behind, again, leaving my working yarn to the left. I'm going to reach behind and grab the red yarn. And I'm going to twist it over that working yarn so that I am still knitting with the light green yarn. But I'm catching that red float. So I'm going to 
keep knitting. And as you can see, it caught that red color again. And this is gonna be a little bit loose as you're working. You can always reach behind and tighten it if you need to, but again, not too tight. We want to leave room for those stitches to breathe. I'm gonna finish out those five light green stitches. And then same concept, I am dropping my yarn always to the left, and then I'm going to reach for that green, and I am going to start knitting with it. Now this is where your tension is going to be super important. What I like to do is stretch out my stitches and then pinch it against the needle so that when I scoop my stitches to be able to knit, I keep that spot in the yarn, and then I can knit my first stitch and then I always go back and double check that I have enough space there. If it's too bunched up like this, too tight, I will pull the back of this to loosen it up a little bit. If you just tug, it'll loosen it up and if it's too loose, you can just even out the tension like that. Same with this red. See how this red float is just <laughs> way too loose right here? You can just take that red and tug it just so it stays out of your way a little bit. So now that I have this green, you can see the fabric, there are no gaps right there because we're taking the yarn from left to right. So there was no need to catch that float one stitch before. Now that we are a few stitches away from this red float, I'm going to catch it again on the next one. So I'm going to drop my working yarn to the left, reach behind, grab the red, and twist so that I can grab the green. And then we are going to knit the green stitches like normal. And I need 10 green stitches, so I am going to be mindful of catching my floats as I need to. For the rest of this row, I don't need the light green again, so I am going to leave it hanging right there, and I will show you how I twist it in the next row so that there are no gaps right here. So we will just be mindful to catch this red yarn, catch that float as we work these green stitches. So now I have my 10 green stitches and I need to start using the red again. And since we've been catching the float, it is pretty nearby and I'm going to just drop my working green yarn to the left, reach behind and grab that red, and then I'm going to start knitting with the red. And I like to do two stitches and then go back and check the tension of the floats. See, it's a little loose right here for my liking. Um, I don't like things to be quite that loose because it's a little uneven for the rest of the fabric. So I'm going to pick up a little bit from the red float along this row. And I'm going to pull up this stitch to tighten that up and then pull that stitch and then I can pull my working yarn and tighten that up and that looks a little bit more even so I'm going to continue going and the rest of this row is just the red so we don't have to worry anymore about switching colors or catching floats so we're just going to knit all of the rest of the stitches that we need in this row I have reached the end of my row, so I'm going to flip my work and let me back up and show you what my yarn balls look like right now. I have my three colors hanging right here from my work. And because we were twisting and catching those floats, the 
balls of yarn are just a little bit twisted. I will take the colors and untwist those around the red. So now we're going to work on the pearl row. Everyone's favorite, purling. <laughs> I know some people are a fan and some people are not, but for the purposes of today's video, it is pretty simple. Same concept, just looks a little bit different because we are purling every stitch and you get to see the fun back of your work where all of those tails and floats are happening looks a little bit more intimidating. So I know for this round, uh, according to my chart, I'm just going to knit red until the same stitch that I stopped with the green on the last row. So we are going to stop one stitch before the green stitch. So here we are one stitch before we need to change colors and because we are purling we are keeping our working yarn in front of our needles so all of your yarns are going to be in front this time instead of behind like when we were knitting but the concept is still the same we are going to drop our yarn to the left reach underneath and grab the next color that we will need but we are going to twist it just like we did for the other row so that we can have our red as our working yarn still and we are going to catch that green under our next purl stitch. Let me zoom in just so you can see a little bit better. And if it makes it easier for you, you can kind of hold that green yarn out of the way so it doesn't catch in your stitch, doesn't get in your way. But you just purl and you have successfully caught that green in that stitch so now you will not have a hole in your fabric and we can move on to working with the green so i'm again dropping it to the left picking up the yarn underneath so that we can work with the green and now you can let that hang wherever and we are going to do seven green stitches so i'm going to purl seven But after four stitches, I'm like, okay, I don't want to leave such a long red float. So I'm going to drop my working yarn to the left, pick up the red, twist it so that I still have green as my working yarn. And we are going to keep going until one before we need the white. Okay, I misspoke. We uh, don't need the white quite yet, or the light green quite yet. We are going to continue on with the green we need a seven green and then we're going to do two red stitches so we don't need to twist the red because it's already coming from the left to the right and since that's the way we're working our stitches uh that won't create any gaps so what i'm going to do is just make those seven green stitches three six seven and then i'm going to drop my yarn to the left pick up the red so i just need two red stitches but this is where it might get a little complicated because we are so close to this white or light green stitch that we need to make sure to catch it before we need it so that it doesn't make a hole right here on the front of our fabric so i'm going to do one red stitch and i'm again going to make sure that this float is good tension wise it's a little tight right now so what i'm going to do is just gently tug on this red just so slightly even it out and if i need to go back and tighten it just a tiny bit i can until it looks somewhat even to me and i think that looks a little bit better so again we are going to drop our working yarn to the left we're going to pick up the color that we are catching and I'm going to twist it so that we still are working with the red, but we are catching that light green that we will need in just a second. So I'm going to do one more red stitch. 
and that makes our two red stitches and now we are going to drop our working yarn to the left i need this green now so we are going to pick that up over those colors and i'm going to need one green stitch just one and again you want to pull this apart and make sure that this float isn't too tight across those two red stitches so again we are dropping our yarn to the left we're going to pick up the white or light green color now we need six stitches in this color so i'm gonna do one, two three and i'm gonna stop at three just to catch the green float because that is what we will need next and i like to stagger my floats so that you don't have two strands crossing over the working yarn like this i've noticed that that from the front it can peek through a little too much it's a little bulky um, and i feel like you can see it a lot more than just carrying one at a time so i will do i will stagger them and so then from the front that's not going to look quite as bulky as both strands being carried over at the same time so again the working yarn goes to the left you grab the green from underneath and twist so that you still have the light green as your working color and then i'm going to continue on i'm going to do one more stitch and then we're going to catch the red color Again, just to stagger those floats, um, but we do need to carry it across because we still need red in the row. And I'm going to keep that light green as my working color. And I need six, I believe. So we're gonna do two more of this light green color. So you can fix the tension right here and make sure that these stitches aren't too loose or too tight together. And now we need one green stitch, reaching over and picking my green yarn. And again, you want to keep it a little bit loose so that you can fix the tension of that float that you carried. I'm going to put that working yarn to the left, reach underneath and pick up the light green that I need. And now I need five light green. Now I'm going to catch my red just because it's been five stitches since I caught it. So I'm going to catch it one more time so that it's not super long float across this twist it and then I'm gonna do three more of these light green stitches and again I'm just spreading everything out and you can fix the tension of this red and then we are going to drop this yarn to the left reach underneath for our red and we are going to start working with that red and right now it looks like there's going to be a gap right here it's because on the next row we will catch this and keep that tight and it will not leave a hole so that's why we catch our floats one stitch before we start the color so that there's no gap there now that i have finished my row let's zoom out a little bit so again we will turn our work and you can see how this is looking. Between the colors, there are no gaps, no holes, and it looks pretty even, and it's not super scrunched up. But yeah, I think that this is a really great way to do intarsia so that you don't have so many balls of yarn or bobbins of yarn, and you're not trying to keep track of every single color change. You can just carry your floats behind and it looks pretty neat. I, If you catch them every three to five stitches, they are not going to be too crazy. And then also you want to stagger your where you catch the floats so that it's not super bulky. And that is my cheater's way 
to doing intarsia color work when you're knitting. I hope this really helped you, was informative, taught you something new. If you have any questions or if I missed something, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe for more knitting, crochet, book content, and uh, comment down below what you're working on or what you thought of this tutorial, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye!